So welcome everybody. Once again, this is Kevin from CSMI in Australia today. I'm going to share with you um, a video on how we fitted uh, the data screen on this particular dozer. Now this dozer actually belongs to um, a guy called Malcolm Royer in, in California in USA. So Malcolm, if you're watching this video, this is your machine that we are fixing the data screen onto. So let's go ahead. On the last video, we actually saw uh, the, the functions and the display on the data screen. And we did mention that there is a pressure transducer, how you fit it in. So there is a, a T connection up here, as you can see. And where this T connection leads to is actually a pressure reducing valve up here. So the oil actually comes from the pump on this line, which goes into the T and it goes into this pressure reducing valve. And what this valve does is if you open this valve, all the oil is going to flow through and just go back into the tank, all right? Now, if you actually close this valve by tightening it, what it's doing, it's, it's preventing oil from going back into the tank, and hence the oil in this line is now going to be fed into your valve block. So it's pretty much, if you open this, all comes from your, just goes back into the tank, and if you tighten this, you're shutting it and you're preventing the oil from the discharge side of the pump going back into the tank and hence it's keeping more oil fed to the valve block and hence it creates more pressure. And hence, since it creates more pressure and you have your pressure reducing valve on this line, it's now reading the pressure in this line. So that's the basic functionality of where it is set up. Um, you can see up here, try to bring it up here so we have spliced the line we put a t-section in there and it's got a right angle fitting so there's two there's a t-section and then there's a right angle fitting that goes into the pressure uh, pressure transmitter and this pressure transmitter can sit comfortably underneath because then you can put the panel on top so I'm going to show you um, how the panel fits in There you go. The panel actually fits in um, up there nicely and it's all secured. And then you just feed the wire up because that wire eventually, this wire will eventually get hooked up into the underneath, uh, underneath of your cab. So there's plenty of slack in the wire. It's pretty long and it can be laid out comfortably underneath up here and actually gets hooked up into the cab. So I'll show you exactly where it fits underneath the cab. Give me a sec. So let's span the camera. Now, underneath the cab, I've used a, a two-sided sticky tape and that's where it actually fits in. You've got a three-way port and it actually sits in there. And I'll pan the camera behind so you can actually see uh, the physical location. So it's nice, nice and neat. You won't be able to see any of the stuff once it's all hooked up. Now, for those of you who are planning to buy this kit, let me reposition this camera. Excuse the shake, guys. I've covered this in another video, how to actually take the cab off. But for those of you who haven't seen it, I'm just going to do it again. It's hard to actually view it over here. Let me just see if I can reposition this um, camera again, guys. So just bear with me. If you actually see up here, there is a screw. So there's two screws on either side. You need to take those in order to be able to actually take the cab off. So once you take those two screws off, I'm just gonna reposition the camera once again. Once you take the two screws off, the whole cab's gonna pop off, right? So that is, um, that's where you actually position the, the pressure transmitter. I'm going to reposition the camera, guys, so just bear with me again. Okay, so let's see if we can get this the right angle. Yeah, just getting it stabilized. Okay, so that's where the um, pressure transmitter actually sits, is underneath this complete thing. And then you have the wires coming up you got plenty of slack wire up here and then this will connect um, into the data or the brain of the data unit which then displays everything clearly now we have we have fitted um, some lights on this machine 
Let me see if I can move this machine. And how we have done it is, let's refocus, time for refocus. Okay, just to make it easy to work with, you take the grill off from here so you can actually access all this area in this thing. You need to take the grill off. Once you take the grill off, guys, you use a tape to actually tape this bonnet in the open position so it's not flapping around and you're not scratching it. It's nice and safe, held up over there. So you can do all your wiring uh, while it's up there. As you can see, we have um, the two hoses for the hydraulic cylinders and then we've just used heat shrink for the lights, right? It then gets fed in here and then the lights actually come off. It's a bit hard to um, see because of the lighting. See if I can try to bring it in there. And then basically the wires then come up here, right? Now we use a kind of color coding. The brown is always positive. So you end up with uh, the, two, the two positives from either side or each bank left and right. And then you've got two blues because blue is high beam, just like in your car when you switch it on as high beam. So it's color coded and easy to identify. So you've got the blue wire for the lights uh, up here. And then it's fed all the way again to a light switch. And the light switch will then be able to independently control four groups of light. It could be a beacon, which could be group one. You could call these... Uh, you could call these group two. Uh, you do have lights underneath the floor pan up here. You could call this group three. You could call these group three. And then on the top of the cab, you have another group and you can call that group four. Um, for these group three, when you have these lights up here, the easiest way is to actually feed a wire from here and then pull it out first. So you got some wire that's, that's stiff enough uh, it's not not soft something that's rigid and stiff enough to actually feed it in from here You pull it out you then solder the two LED wires to it and then you pull it back That's the easiest and the fastest way Otherwise, you'll be fighting to feed this wire in up here and you'll spend a long time so Stiff wire feed it in from here take the screw out take the lamp housing off use a pair of tweezers pull the wire out solder it to the two LED wires boom pull it back job done so that's the trick of uh, wiring these lights uh, in these areas that are hard to actually get the wires in there um what else since here i'll just share a few things so we fitted this uh, light switch uh, up here of course it's not square it doesn't really matter we just want to keep it nice and tucked inside this uh, wiring harness uh, up here so that you know it's not flattering around anywhere and this light switch will be able to control four group of lights, separate lights, you know, on your boom, on your cab or a beacon. And how it works is uh, it actually has a servo cable that goes, let's reposition this again. Okay. I'll show this or I'll cover this in the next video. Um, it actually goes into your, your receiver uh, a channel, you pick a channel that's empty and then you program that channel to a three-way switch on your radio and once you do that What it basically does is when you flick your three-way switch, it will operate four separate group of lights uh, I'll probably cover that in the next video show you how the switch works and how it's actually hooked up So it just gives you a better idea of uh, how it's done so that's pretty much it on this video, guys. As usual, thank you for your question and your comments. If you have any other questions, any comments, or you have any 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 queries, leave us um, a comment in the section below or email us at info at csmi.com.au. Thank you for watching.